Kevin Marquette, dating coach for Smart, Strong, Successful Women, and your personal trainer for love. Welcome back to the Love You podcast, where you're going to learn everything you need to know about dating, relationships, sex, and men from a man's point of view. <coughs> I'm so smooth, it hurts. <coughs> I want to begin by quoting David Foster Wallace. It sounds very pretentious, but um, this isn't because I read one of his books. This is from a famous speech he gave at Kenyon College um, in 2005. There are these two young fish swimming along, and they happen to be an older fish swimming the other way who nods at them and says, morning, boys, how's the water? And the two young fish swim on for a bit, and eventually one of them looks over at the other and says, what the hell is water? The point of the fish story is merely that the most obvious important realities are often the ones that are the hardest to see and talk about. So that's David Foster Wallace. I don't know David Foster Wallace, but I definitely see that as part of my job here on the Love You podcast to talk about the obvious important realities that are hard to talk about and well, talk about them. On podcast 61, because I know you're keeping track at home, I discuss whether men and women are the same. My conclusion, which is not terribly controversial, is that we are equal and we deserve equal rights and protections under the law. However, we are not the same. We are not identical. For some people, that doesn't go down easily. Right? And here's why I think that is. Even though it's abundantly obvious to anyone with two eyes, two ears, and any life experience that men and women are not identical, because there's still sexism, which is real, we hold on to the idea that men and women are the same. To admit that we're different would be seen as some sort of slippery slope to admitting that we should have different rights, which of course is not what I'm suggesting at all. So I do a lot of talk about gray areas and moderation. You can say no to sex, and that does not mean that I am slut shaming you. You can insist on courtship, but that doesn't make you a diva. You can be supportive and easygoing, and that doesn't make you some sort of step for wife. Similarly, we can acknowledge that women and men on, on the whole are not exactly the same without it suggesting that women are in any way inferior to men. Now, if that still seems hard to grapple with, let's turn things around and ask if men truly understand women. I don't think I have to wait too long to answer that question. I think it's patently obvious that they don't. I remain confused that my daughter likes to play damsel in distress and be saved by me or her brother when we're playing imagination games. I don't understand what my mom's best friend does when she talks to her daughter five times a day, every day, when her daughter is 40, a 44-year-old mother herself. I am shocked to hear my daughter's five-year-old friends already acting like mean girls, threatening not to be friends with her if she's friendly with the wrong crowd. I am baffled that my wife cried when she ch chipped her toenail polish back in 2008. I can't even make her cry with a, hand, uh, a handwritten heartfelt birthday card. So I don't think it's any stretch to say that as a guy who specializes in listening to women, women in general are more complex, attuned to conversational subtleties, feel a greater need to feel desired and safe, crave emotional connection, probably more than men do. Now, this doesn't mean that all women are this way. I know plenty of women are not this way. But as a dating coach who talks about men and women, it's useful to be able to make generalizations. This is merely one of them. So now let's talk about men and talk about your view of them, right? Um, because this is a podcast, not, not uh, a seminar. Uh, I'm going to share with you something that I did with a group of women that attended a high-end retreat I threw in San Diego a few years ago. Here's what the 16 women in the room had to say about my gender. Men. They connect physically before they connect emotionally. They pursue, then they run hot and cold. They don't plan in advance. They're overly logical. They have fragile egos. They lie, they cheat. They don't know how to dress. They talk about and look at other women. They're narcissistic, they're selfish. They hit on you when you're not available. They offer friends with benefits. They're inflexible. They hide behind their kids or their work. They're inconsiderate. They don't listen. They're stingy or cheap. They're emotionally withholding. They like to receive affection but not give it. Everything is on their terms. They're controlling. They're rude. They're immature. They have poor social skills. They have no friends. They're superficial. They're cowardly. They're inhibited. They falsely represent themselves. I'm going to take a drink of water. Let's say that's true. What does that say about all men? Nothing. 
In fact, you could take that same list and do two things with it. You could put a positive spin on it, or you could eliminate a guy because of it. Right? Men connect physically before they connect emotionally. Right? And I've been saying some version of that for years. Men look for sex and find love. That's a feature of men. It's not a bug. As long as you understand this and don't think you have a relationship just because you're having sex, you'll be good. Men pursue, then they stop and run hot and cold. Well, that goes back to understanding that men look for sex and find love. When they don't think they can fall in love with you, they pull back. Men don't plan in advance. Flip side of that is men can be spontaneous. They're overly logical. Some people would call that thoughtful instead of overly emotional. They've got fragile egos. Some might say that this shows their vulnerability. And if any of these typical male traits gets in the way, if any of the long list of grievances you have with men is overly problematic, which is perfectly fair, you know what to do. Dump him and find a different man who's a little less typical alpha male, controlling, narcissistic, right? And in return, find someone who's a little bit more like a woman, right? And that's, nobody says stuff like that, <laughs> but that's exactly what we're talking about, right? I've heard women say uh, w without any irony, God, life would be so much easier if I could just date women. Well, you can date m men who are less like the typical man, the stereotype of the worst of the worst of the worst men that I just read. There's plenty of them. Question is, are you willing to date them? <laughs> but despite the litany of complaints that women have about men, it's not that dissimilar than what they would say about other women. Remember, this is a list that women at my retreat, smart, strong, successful women who are struggling to understand a man and find love. This is what they had to say about other women. And I'm quoting and reading. Bat shit crazy. Overthink. Overly emotional. High maintenance. Clingy. Anxious. Demanding. Difficult. Complicated. Expect men to be psychic. Indirect. Emotionally fast. Jealous, insecure, wordy, obsessive, controlling, competitive, bitchy, reactive, self-absorbed, vain, superficial, perfectionistic, unrealistic, overly romantic, scheduled, fanatical, planners, teasing, critical. So maybe the, maybe the topic of this podcast was, what's so confusing about men? But remember, we're only doing this topic because that's because you date men. <laughs> Right? If you dated women, you might discover that women are just as confusing, just as challenging, perhaps even more so. And right? it's just men are, men are frustrating to you because you date them. Ultimately, <clears throat> it's my job and your job to understand these big, broad sociological differences between men and women, understand the definition of masculine and feminine energy, right? because they explain most of your struggle. Um, stereotypes about men being simple, logical, wanting to get to the point, not wanting to hear the details of your day, content as long as he's fed and fucked, ties his self-esteem to his money and his ability to make you happy, is frustrated that he can never seem to make you happy. That's kind of sort of true. So there are exceptions, and if your partner's one of them, it's also fair. But please don't buy into that common, men are so confusing bit. We're not. If anything, men are most confused about why their best never seems to be good enough. So we are going to take a question today <clears throat> from my friend. Uh, her name is Jo. Welcome to the Love You Podcast, Jo. Hi. Hi, Evan. How are you? How's, how was that, was that uh, rant, ranty enough? <laughs> um, it resonated with me a lot. So I felt like I could have been the woman that's, you know, seeming complicated to a man and definitely understanding why the guy is like seeming complicated to me, the woman. So, okay. Yeah. Well, I, I have no idea what you're going to say. So lay it on me <laughs> and maybe I can help you. Okay. So, um, I recently was, um, I was dumped, was, uh, taken out of a relationship in a sense by a guy who had pursued me pretty, pretty intensely for, um, about a month. And then we were in a, what I would call a situationship. It wasn't really defined. Okay. Um, for how long? For, uh, three and a half months. And then he, that was after he dumped you. I, I'm sorry. To interrupt, oh, but... no, no, no. We were in, in a, in a, in a relationship of some kind for about three and a half months. Okay. And then he dumped you. 
And then he dumped me and proceeded to tell me that he was in love with his former girlfriend and um, had been thinking about her the whole time. And I had not known about her until this moment, um, but since something was off. And um, so I just, I, you know, he totally pulled back and got really cold, like not cold, but just um, he... Yeah, well, yeah, he totally pulled back and just cut himself off. And I guess I, I couldn't understand how he could do that because I'm just not capable of that, I guess. But um, yeah, it confused me because I just, I told him, you know, why didn't you bring that up? Not, maybe not at the very beginning, but somewhere close, somewhere after about a month or so, maybe it would have been good to tell me you were still having feelings for somebody else. Okay. So. <laughs> are, yeah. are, you, are you ready for the answer? I guess so. I'm here. So. Good. You're brave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I think in any dating and relationship situation, you, I'm, first of all, let me leave with, I'm sorry that happened to you. I mean, it's, uh, it sucks. It's yeah. happened to pretty much everybody, but it still sucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I don't know this gentleman, so I can't really vouch for his character. Um, but I'm presuming there was something good about him that you liked. It's not oh, like yeah. he suddenly became a bad person, no, like Dr. No. Evil kind of. <laughs> no, not at all. Not okay. at all. No. Um, but you, you got emotionally screwed in this exchange. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you say, well, how, how could this happen? Um, your question most pointedly was, why didn't he tell me sooner? Yeah. So step back, put yourself in his shoes for a second yeah. and answer the question. Well, probably because he wasn't sure. Um, and he had said, you know, he was trying, to, he did tell me he was trying to figure out whether or not this would work between him and me. And it just wasn't happening inside of him. He said he felt no spark. And there was attraction, but no spark. And with this other person, there was a spark. So it was a constant comparison. Mm -hmm. So that was. But, but no, that, that's why he left you. Yeah. Which, which again may or may not be a good decision for him in the long run. That's a that's a separate issue. Okay. We're trying to get into the the, the big question here is what's so confusing about Matt? Yeah. Right. And you're saying I'm confused, and I'm telling you, there's nothing inherently confusing about this if you can manage to take off the Joe hat, yes. put yourself in the ex boyfriend hat, yeah, and say why would a good guy, yeah, not tell me early on in the relationship about his ex-girlfriend who still had a control on him? Um, maybe because he didn't want to jeopardize what might be happening with me. So, because if, yeah. <laughs> I know. Kind of, it's kind of logical right. to, not, to not tell your new girlfriend, I'm still hung up on my old one. Yeah. In fact, anybody in the same situation with a monicum of sense would yeah. be like, <laughs> Here's the girl I'm courting. I'm trying to get over the person who broke my heart, right? Yeah. Oh, by the way, I'm thinking about her all the time. <laughs> How would that help? It would be, it would be honest, yes. but it wouldn't do anything to further you or deepen your relationship. It wouldn't do anything to build trust with you. It would essentially be like, he's trying to build this relationship, like blowing up a balloon, making it stronger and stronger. He'd essentially be stabbing the balloon <laughs> right? Yeah. by telling his new girlfriend that he's not that into her. Yes. <laughs> so he was really trying the relationship on for size and yeah. discovering that for whatever reason, good, bad, right, wrong, mm -hmm. it didn't fit, which has kind of mm -hmm. nothing to do with you. It has to do with this power that she has over him. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So... When you say this is confusing, I say it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. I say it's sad. I say it may be short-sighted on his part to go for the person with whom he has the most sparks. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm well, you know, outspoken about saying chemistry is not the best yeah. predictor of a great relationship, but you can't, te I can't teach everybody in the world, you know, <laughs> to value consistency and kindness and compatibility. If right. his girlfriend's hot and crazy and he's going to go down that road again. <laughs> That's his problem. He right. learned the lesson the hard way. Right. So the confusion part yeah. is not yeah. really that confusing because it's what, if you were in his shoes, maybe you are right now, you're trying to get over this guy. Right. And you start dating another guy. Yeah. And you don't, and you don't really know where it's going. And he's yeah. a really nice guy, but you're still kind of hung up on the last one. <laughs> when are you going to tell him? I mean, <laughs> What, what's the right time? 
Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's very true. That's very true. I guess it, it felt like, um, gosh, dude, you could have said something at some point. For your, for your benefit. Yeah. To know everything he's thinking. Yeah. Would have been uh, useful. Yeah. Um, for his benefit, it made no sense to tell you the truth. Yeah. And the, again, the best way for you to see that is, <laughs> is, is, is to reverse to, the situation. Yeah, just to reverse the situation. And it's, mm -hmm. this is not a gender based thing. No. I've, been, I've been on both sides of the equation <laughs> where I've been the guy who's hung up on someone and I've been with the woman who's not that into me yeah. because she's still pining for her ex boyfriend. Right, right. I, that, right. That, is, that is commonplace to the point of being mundane. <laughs> so it's not this isn't something that he did nefariously to hurt you right. most dating most people are selfish in a small way not selfish trying to hurt but right. to out of self-preservation right. it would completely undermine his ability to potentially move on with you right if he confessed his thoughts every time they happen right. in fact the only person I know who does anything like that is me because I'm constitutionally <laughs> incapable of keeping a secret. <laughs> and two, I just, I've told this story, but I don't remember what I've said and where. Two weeks before I married my wife, we were dating for 16 months, not married, uh, got proposed. Um, and she's like, you know, la-di-da, it's her skill set. She doesn't put any pressure on me. She's 38. She wants to have kids, but there's no, like, Oh, I'm putting all the pressure on. I got to figure out what we're doing here. I mean, like, if I'm not going to marry you, you deserve to find a guy who's going to marry you. And I put all this arbitrary pressure on myself to figure it out. And two weeks before, I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, it's like a coin flip. And it's nothing personal. I just, I know I have to either step up or step out. And I don't want to step out, but I'm really afraid to step up because I don't know what I'm supposed to be feeling. And I did gave this big confession. Other women would have, you know, cut me or jumped out a window or dumped me out of self-preservation. My wife was like, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with that information. But thank you for letting me know what you're thinking. And then two weeks later, I proposed. And when I was on my knee, the first thing she said was, are you serious? <laughs> like two weeks ago, you weren't sure, but now... Now you are. And... and and so that, that's, that's sort of the God's honest truth about, about dating relationship stuff. Yeah. When we're blindly passionate about someone, we cease all critical thinking. Yeah. Right? Where, where there's really no critical thinking. When you're not blinded by passion, you, mm -hmm. right, you could literally view someone dispassionately right. and see they're good and see they're bad. And ultimately, you're making a choice. Yes, I'm going to keep going in this relationship. No, I'm not. Yeah. Right, and so right. When, when the answer is not clear, you process it yourself in the back of your head. And yeah. again, every woman who's listening to this, who is casually dating a guy and isn't sure if he's boyfriend worthy, is right. doing the exact same thing that your boyfriend did to you. Right. Maybe right. not for three and a half months. Yeah. Right, that's right. a long time. But to be fair, if you, if you sign on to what, what I talk about, Yes. Not that I'm any sort of oracle. No. I tell women, if a boy doesn't step up to become your boyfriend in six, eight weeks, so yeah. your three and a half month thing doesn't last three and a half months. You're like, hey, if you really liked me, you'd have already taken me off the market. Yeah. And having the courage to not have it turn into a situationship, clever <laughs> term, right? Right. You, you, you've, ha you've had enough time to figure out if you want this. You, know, you, you don't right. want this? Bye. Right. So that would have cut your emotional investment in half. True. Very, right? very true. So yeah. again, I'm not blaming you for how long he extended it. He was doing what was right for him. Right. You were doing what you thought was right for you, giving him enough time, but you yeah. gave him too much time. Yeah. And yeah. you kind of fell for him. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Instead of paying attention to his actions, which is guys who want to be my boyfriend, and I've had boyfriends before, usually a little bit more enthusiastic. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, that's very true. It so was, I did a lot of talking, not enough listening, but <laughs> did I say anything that That sounded, resonated? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, it's very true that I was getting to that point because I, I do listen to you and, and read your posts. And, and um, I knew that it was getting to that point where I needed to say, you know what? 
no. And it was just, I think the matter of, of him not telling me what his full truth was, that was very confusing to me because it had been so long. And I was like, you know, I don't expect that right away. Cause yeah, that would be undercutting the whole thing. That would be <laughs> stupid. Um, he told you, he told you, I mean, essentially the second he says that, as I said, it, yeah. it punctures the balloon. Yeah. So saying it to you any earlier than that. It would have ended it. Then. Didn't serve, didn't serve his purposes. It would have just served yours. And ultimately right. people do what's right for them, for them. And they sort of hope that nobody gets hurt along the way. And that, yeah. is not, and that is not a man trait at all. I can't tell no. you how many women keep coming out with nice guys because they're trying to give him a chance. I, I know I'm supposed to date a nice guy, but I'm really not that into him. And yeah. Th this, is, this is a people thing. It's not a man thing. Yeah, I guess the more and more I listen to you too, it's, it's like guys are confusing and women are confusing, but really it's, it's not, we are different. We have different ways of processing. But I think it's it's more about um, who we are as human beings. It, yes. It's it's not like there's this huge secret thing like that makes us different and you can't understand. It's like look at what's in front of you and yes. don't. Yeah. So it's just I think it's cool that you were saying this is not a guy thing. This is more just a human being thing because I've been on the other side like you were saying. I've been the other person where I'm like. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I guess the other the other thing, and I and this is not a man thing. It's I think a person thing. Is the idea of the spark really got to me because he was like, you know, there's no spark with you, and there's a spark with this other woman. And I remember all the things you said, and I was trying to tell him, I was like, that might not be the only thing to follow. Like we're really compatible, and all these things, and it, I couldn't get through to him. I'll, I'll tell you, I had a I had a phone call with a client yesterday. Um, she followed her spark. Fifty five successful woman. She followed yeah. a spark on a cross-country flight for a guy she'd gone out with uh, wow. five times. He invited her, and uh, it was kind of a disaster. Mm -hmm. And she was hurt and devastated, and I was not surprised in the least. And I don't like being the I told you so guy. Yeah. Um, again, this is a very much an adult. Right? She's yeah. 55 years old, and she's like, I just have to follow it. Yeah. And I felt like a parent talking to a 16-year-old about why the boy with the long hair, you know, I'm sure he's nice, but you shouldn't kind of go all in on that. Yeah. And um, uh, I, I think that we, we talk about this, this, this is a human thing. When you learn this stuff that we talk about here, this, this language that's based on real science about chemistry lasting for 18 to 36 months uh, and real love being what happens after that passion dissipates or do you choose to be nice to that person or you realize you hate that person yeah um love is the thing that sustains you for 40 years attraction is what gets you into the to begin with yeah so you need some attraction but attraction being the major arbiter of what who you choose to mate um is is false and all we need is our whole life evidence to look at that yeah. every person that you've ever been wildly attracted to is not your boyfriend right now right Right. right. Yeah. So it, so people just keep on touching that hot stove and they're like, I can't believe it's still hot. <laughs> it burned and, me. Why? Exactly. And your, your, your boyfriend, ex-boyfriend is going to have to learn the hard way. And, and that's his problem. Right. Um, you are equipped to make, based on what you told me today, you're equipped to make really good decisions and not jump to, uh, uh, it, emotional, irrational, blind conclusions about the opposite sex because yeah. they're humanized, right? Yeah. It's not bad men deceiving me. It's no. just a confused guy who doesn't know what he wants. And that's yeah. the, more of a real picture. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for being a part of this. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Keep okay. reading, okay? I shall. All, All right. Good stuff. All right. Bye. I want to thank uh, Joe for appearing with me here on today's Love You podcast. My name is Evan Mark Katz. Our, our topic for next week is, is a favorite of mine. It's called, Are You Compromising or Are You Settling? Uh, you don't want to miss it. If you enjoy this podcast, you enjoy this coaching, and you want to be a future guest on the Love You podcast, just go to www.evanmarkkatz.com forward slash podcast guest to see upcoming topics and ask your questions. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes and YouTube. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. 
and best of all, I give away the most free dating and relationship advice of anybody on the entire internet on www.evanmarkkatz.com. There's a survey that I just posted on my homepage that asks, that helps you identify your number one relationship challenge. I would encourage you to take that survey, give me your email address, and I will help you get the love that you deserve. I'll see you again next week on the Love You Podcast.